Britain has some of the best restaurants in the world. You couldn't have said that 10 years ago. But now, we've become a nation of food lovers and restaurant goers. I want to celebrate Britain's culinary coming of age by finding the best restaurant out there. So I asked you to tell me where you love to eat out, and you told me big time. We had over 12,000 nominations for brilliant places to eat. I spent months going through the nominations with my best restaurant team, and I've chosen the best two restaurants from your nominations in each type of cuisine. And now, I'm going to put them through their paces. If they're going to win the title of my best restaurant, they've got a lot to prove. And if they let you down, there's going to be trouble. Tonight, my brand new nationwide restaurant competition kicks off with one of the world's favorite cuisines. It's Italian. And it promises to be an incredible battle between two very different but equally stunning Italian restaurants. I've always loved Italian food, and at its best, it really manages to transform simple, fresh ingredients into extraordinary dishes packed full of flavor. May I have the onion, please, Ashley? Thank you. The Italians take their cooking and ingredients very, very seriously. And they're fiercely competitive. Love that passion. You sent in a huge number of Italian nominations. The two fighting for a place in the semi-finals of this nationwide competition are both exceptional. Casamir from Bristol versus Manula from London. We're going to see raw young talent from the West Country take on a highly experienced chef in the capital. Go to war, you win it. That's what we're here for. Casimir's cutting-edge Italian food will battle it out with Manula's authentic rustic dishes. Two ambitious young culinary alchemists will challenge a Sicilian gastronomic godfather. If you mess up, you're going to get it. I mean, you're going in for the high jump with me. The sky's the limit. You just want to move forward and get to the top of the game. But who will come out on top? Hopefully, you don't make no mistakes. Bring it on. That's what we do. I'm going to push both these Italian contenders to breaking point with three daunting challenges. I intend to test them to the absolute limit because there can only be one winner. The first of my two brilliant Italian competitors is Manula, a truly exceptional restaurant that fought its way through thousands of nominations. Manula, named after the Sicilian almond, is run by 45-year-old Santino, who cooks hearty, authentic food inspired by the love of his birthplace, Sicily. My cooking is all about simplicity. It's about taking as few ingredients as possible and making sure that the quality of those ingredients shine. Delicious. He spent years as a head chef at some of London's top restaurants before opening Manula a year ago. It quickly gained a loyal following. This place screams Sicily. I mean, that man cooks from the heart. Two squid, please, God. Santino is fiery and passionate, demanding nothing less than perfection from all his kitchen staff. What the fuck is that doing in there? Yeah. And his front of house managers, Angelo and Rocco. If you mess up, you're going to get it. I mean, you're going in for the high jump with me. Uh, I'm a very competitive person. I go out to win. I don't like to lose. I'll put my food against anybody's in the country. No doubt. I love Santino's competitive spirit, and he's going to need every ounce of it to handle my first pressure test, because my 30 hand-picked guests are about to arrive and order all at the same time. It's every restaurant's worst nightmare. When was the last time we did 30 covers like that? We can do this. We can do this. OK, good. I, I love that level of confidence. Yeah. You're a new restaurant. Absolutely. You get on the blog. A lot to prove. Totally. I'll be watching everything. I'll be like a hawk over the dining room, Rocco, yeah. and here in the kitchen as well. Okay. I'm giving Manula just two hours to produce the best meal these 30 customers have ever eaten. Do your customers proud, and more importantly, don't let yourselves down. Absolutely. Yeah? Good, Good luck. Bye, ragazzi. Santino's restaurant is packed. I'm going to push the kitchen and the front of house to the limits and, in the process, give them a chance to shine. Every service is war. Go to war, you win it. That's what we're here for. Some to drink to start, sir. Order. On the menu tonight is a choice of three starters. Sicilian tomato salad, hot smoked venison and... <laughs> lobster linguine. Really good lobster for you, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. Lobster? Yeah, same for me, please. Lobster as well. Lobster too. Everybody's having the lobster. Check on! Two lobsters, please. That must be 14 or 16 linguine of lobster. Service has only just started, and already I can see a problem. He's going to be in the shit in there in about five minutes' time, because everyone's ordering linguine, but no one's controlling it. 
Check on. It takes about a quarter of an hour to cook each lobster linguine. Two covers, Hamash. Do a linguine lobster. Put the linguine in. 13 minutes linguine. If front of house don't persuade the diners to order the simpler starters, Santina will struggle to finish service within the two-hour time limit. I want three lobsters. One, two, three. A good maitre d' should be able to sell the other dishes on the menu. So push the risotto, yes. Balance the linguine. Push the venison. The venison is delicious. I'm afraid I'm going to have the linguine of Scottish lobster as well. Oh, please. Linguine as well, please. Please, sir. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> How long for the next four linguine and two linguine? Another six linguine after that. And with the clock ticking, Nine Santino's up against it. Jesus Christ. I feel for him right now and there because he's about to explode. It's like an hand grenade. You just pulled the pin and he's going to go any minute now, guaranteed. Why? Because he's getting screwed. Upstairs, they have to help him and make his life a little bit easier in there. Have they sold any of that delicious venison? Uh, one. One. Everyone's gone bed. Everyone's gone lobster. Mm. One more lobster, please. Thank you very much. Here we go. Four linguine. Two lobsters, please. Get me Rocco, please. The risotto is delicious. Push the risotto. Hey, I try, I'm yep. trying to do that. Yeah, charm them. No, I do my best. Recommend. Oh, Come on, push it. Yeah. Four linguine lobster, just for a change. Clean the place, my darling. Here we go. Two thirds of the diners have ordered the lobster linguine. The starters have taken an hour to leave the kitchen. I spotted a weakness here, and it's not the food. It's the nicest lobster I've ever had. It's really good. The lobster was lovely, nice and spicy. Yeah. On to the main course. Check on. One, two, three fillets of beef. And once again, Rocco has failed to sell the two quicker dishes on the menu. Well cooked. Huh? Everyone's gone for the beef fillet. Medium well. Well done for you as well, madam. Or... What is he playing at? Guys, check on. Three beef. That's one hour gone. One hour left one to hour go. One hour left, guys. One hour. Are you going to get all those beef out, especially the ones that are well done? Uh, it's a tall order. We're going to be up to it. We're going to be up to Give me the fucking three beef now. <laughs> I'm searching for my best Italian, and I'm putting Sicilian restaurant Manula in London's West End to the test with my first challenge. 30 customers have just arrived and all ordered at the same time. Jesus Christ. Rocco's front of house took orders for over 20 lobster linguine and almost sank the kitchen. Now head chef Santino has been overwhelmed by the large number of orders taken for the main course. Chef on, three beef. That's one hour gone, one hour left one to go. One hour left, guys, one hour. He's going to sink. Because upstairs, they're just taking orders with all the linguine on every check, and more importantly, all the beef. All this beef, three beef, one medium, one rare, one medium well. Yeah, don't screw the kitchen, do you know what I mean? I feel like I'm going to fall down any minute now. I swear to God, I feel like I'm going to faint. Give me some water. Right, let's go. Table nine, we're not going to be late. Do you understand me? We are not going to be late. With just 35 minutes left of my two-hour time limit, the finishing line is in sight. The last thing Santino needs is another front-of-house cock-up. 25 past 10, it was about 10 when we ordered. Here we go, Rocco. Table 14, yeah. the starters. Table? 14, how many the starters? 14, they, they're waiting for the starter. So yeah, but I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna we've, been, check. we've been cooking we for 90 minutes. We didn't, we didn't send a check because we wanted to slow down. We don't send you the haven't sent the check. Shit, oh, and now he's hold sending on, hold on. now. Rocco says he's held back the order to help the kitchen catch up. But what he really means is they're even further behind with the service than Santino thought. Come on, you've got to, you've got to, you have to have the balls and explain the fuck up. You can't hold a ticket back. If you do hold a ticket back, he's got to know. It's a fucking like race, mate. What do you mean slow it down? You you, so you've forgotten yeah. it. That's all you've done. You've just goddamn forgotten it. Never mind giving me bullshit excuses. I'm, I'm in the middle of goddamn service. The service of my life. Everything is started in the main course. Yeah. You what? I just... Say what? Telling you. No, 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 nothing. What nothing. do you want to do? No, no, no. I don't want to do anything, chef. I okay. want this fixed. We have a problem. We need to fix it. Let's go quickly. I got a small venison. I got one burrata. I got four linguine. Oh, Get the four oh, linguine oh, on. Oh, I got oh, one, oh, two, oh, three, oh, four, oh, five fucking fillets of beef. Oh, oh, shit. The, the, the bottom line is he forgot the ticket. Yes. Yeah. He didn't hold anything back. No. He forgot the fucking the ticket. ticket. And he's come here and instead of being a man yeah. and saying say to me, with balls, Look, chef, it's happened. Yeah. It can happen to anyone. He's come to me and said to me and lied to me, thinking I'm stupid. Santina's in the shit. I mean, big time. All because of Rocco. 
But I have to say, he's got my respect tonight because he's, he's encouraging those cooks along every ounce of the way. We're nearly there. Come on, guys. We can do this. Come on, boys. Believe it. I mean, if that was me in that situation 10 years ago, I would have flipped my lid big time and pickled the balls of Rocco, turned them into fucking borata. I'm not losing. Come on, move it. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you. Santino has cooked his heart out tonight. He's only just made it to the end of service. But for my diners, his simple Sicilian food has been outstanding. I had the lobster to start, perfectly cooked, really nice bite of chilli, and then had the beef. I can't fault it at all, really. Yeah, everything was cooked beautifully. Right, what was the menu tonight? The menu was burrata, and then venison, linguine with lobster as a starter, beef, squid, a risotto? No, no, the menu was linguine, beef, linguine, beef. 25 times. We had the passion, the soul, and the food, but we didn't match it with the service. When you have a table of six, you've got to get that six in. And we waited 92 minutes before you realised that that table was forgotten. That's not good enough, Rocco. Look back on it and learn. That's all That's you can do. Say, say, That's all you can do. Mistake, we can do it again, and I'll kill you. Yeah. All right? But today, I won't. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Grazie. You. Grazie. That was so intense. Oh, my God. It was like the biggest rush in your life. It was just amazing. I don't know what went on with the front house. I could kill him. But we held it together. I got the so stupid smile on my face. I'm so happy. I'm so proud. Now it's time for my second contender to be put to the test. Such a wonderful restaurant that my team and I felt it simply had to be in the top two. This is Casamir in Bristol, a fantastic Italian restaurant. Now, it's run by two young brothers who today are the youngest holders of a Michelin star in Britain. I've got some very, very high hopes for them in this competition. I love this restaurant because it's a family affair. Mum and Dad, front of house. And in the kitchen, two brothers creating cuisine unlike anything I've ever seen in an Italian restaurant. Really good presentation, uh, unique. Brothers Peter and John Ray are so creative and experimental that, frankly, they make Heston look old-fashioned. We really want to take customers through a new experience, something special and magical. What I really like about these two guys is their energy and their ambition. They are really seriously pushing the culinary boundaries out to the extreme, and they're still in their early 20s. We think exactly alike because, obviously, there's two minds thinking on one job. Well, we're almost like one complete person, if that makes sense. You two, I don't know if you're completely bonkers or a pair of child geniuses. They've got a gastronomic instinct which can't be taught or learned. I was proud of my boys from the very first day they were born, the first step, the first smile. But now, what can I say? I'm just the proudest father in the world. But I can see that this success has come at a price. Peter and John Ray's culinary dreams are being funded by every penny of their parents' life savings. We had to sacrifice our retirement. Well, yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. It was a big gamble, I tell you, it was a big gamble. Let's hope Paco's paternal faith is going to be rewarded, because Casimir are about to face my first pressure test. I'm going to hit them with 30 diners, all arriving and ordering at the same time. OK, guys. Everybody at the station. And like Manula, they have just two hours to produce the perfect meal for my special guests. There's a lot of anxiety in me, so I just want to get it, go in, get the service out. Hopefully, we don't make no mistakes. Today, yeah, is about pressure. I'll be watching everything. I'll be in the kitchen, I'll be in the dining room, and I'll be missing nothing. You guys won a Michelin star last year. Phenomenal. Today, raise the bar again. My 30 guests are about to experience an avant-garde take on Italian cuisine. Will they love it or wish they'd just gone for a pizza? Right then, let's go start going, boys. First out, chicken liver parfait. That's nice. The parfait's lovely, but 
very strong, that master puree. You want it to be that strong? It's it? one of the main elements, because obviously that's where we highlight the tops. Yeah. Because we're quite, we, we like the herbs and we just want the other things to work around it. Fine. Next up, beetroot risotto with pickled fennel. Table nine and table seven. How is the risotto? Yeah, very good. Yeah, nice very and sweet. Good. And bravely, trout, sous vide. The fish is vacuum packed and cooked in a warm water bath so its texture remains unchanged. It's daring to experiment like this, but you can't alienate the customer. They need to understand what's being served to be able to appreciate it. Um, is the fish meant to be cooked like this? It's a bit of a strange consistency. It is. It's because it's cooked in a water bath, uh -huh. so it keeps the texture and the flavour and yeah. the taste. Right, OK. Um, well, I really just don't like it, to be honest. You don't? No, not at all. OK. So Sorry. what would you... I mean, you can quickly probably pan fry it, but it'll absolutely ruin the texture of it. But if That's you're okay. happy with that, do you want me to do that no, for no, you? No, no, I'll eat my peas. No? no. You sure? Yes, yes. Yeah, OK. Yes, it is. Customers are coming here for the first time. You have to explain to them. Oh, I know. To make us very pink, very, very pink. Just, yeah. Just, we, we, I'm just, we I'm just observation. To. I do, still do. It stops the confusion. Yeah. She almost challenged me on what I was saying, rather than just accepting that I didn't like it and I feel it wasn't cooked properly, which then made it very hard for me to send it back. It's crucial to keep customers on side, and Mum Susan has to take responsibility for that front of house. We're not in the 1980s, and if a customer wants their fish cooked a little bit more, two seconds, two minutes, whatever it may be, you get it done. Next up, quail with celery root puree on a pastry nest. It's also served very rare, and again, customers should be told. When we asked how the quail was cooked, the waiter turned around and said, well, of course, it's something you have to get used to, and I thought, I didn't, yeah, I didn't really appreciate that too much. I'm worried by how much food is coming back uneaten. Just the, the one thing that strikes me, um, no one takes any food back to the kitchen, it's just dumped here. No one gives these guys food oh, back. They, yeah, but they always do at the end of the evening. What, not there and then? Well, it, it depends. If obviously something's said... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just listen, I mean, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm no. here to find out how you're running a restaurant. Of course, yeah, yeah. Fish comes back, quail comes back, and no one goes back into the kitchen with it. Yeah. I know they're your sons, but it doesn't stop me from telling them yeah. the truth. Motherly love is a wonderful thing, but keeping the truth from your chefs is a mistake. Do you ever get feedback from the dining room? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, when? Pretty much uh, most nights, so. Most nights? Yes. And what kind of feedback do you get back, Peter, uh, in general? Yeah, normally really positive. Everything's uh, normally runs really perfect, perfectly smooth. I get complaints in my restaurant. That's the only way I've learned, because you constantly get feedback on a daily basis. Not always great and uh, blowing smoke up each other's ass. You only learn from the negatives, not the positives. Peter and John Ray have finished service in less than two hours. And despite some criticisms, most of my guests love Casimir. I thought the food was really special, really spectacular. I thought the dishes were really intricate and really clever and really well-balanced flavours. Really, really good. You wouldn't go to many other places and get this sort of cooking and these sort of ideas on your plate. And the presentation is fantastic, isn't it? A Michelin star doesn't confirm everything you send out is perfect. If you're trying to be avant-garde, you've got to go with your customers. You've got to take every customer forward. And like I said, if she wants her fish cooked more, I cook it. I cook her trout more. And if anything comes back that's half eaten, these two, what they need to know is what's wrong with it there and then, not at the end of the night, not 15 minutes later. Yeah, but how many chefs have you got under you? You're, 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 missing, you're missing my point. No, it's true, isn't it? All I want in my restaurant on a daily basis is the negatives. That makes me better. And they're your chefs, not your sons. They're your sons on your oh, day I off. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> This family depends on this restaurant, and it's a business. Yeah. It's not a playground. Yeah. Oh, no. There's a big That's difference. A there is a big difference. Very big difference. Well done. Thanks, Gordo. Yeah, thank you. It's difficult when you've got family working together. Obviously, with your mum and dad running in front of the house, like Gordon said, wrapping, them, wrapping us in cotton wool is absolutely everything he says. It's totally true. There's two very talented young chefs in there. What they need now is that level of guidance, but tough love, and not having their ass kissed by their mother. Tonight, two brilliant restaurants are battling to become my best Italian and win a place in the semi-final. 
The coach trip pushed them both to the limits. Now I've invited them to London for a debrief. What they don't know is, since they last saw me, I've sent secret diners into the restaurants to see how they perform when they're not in the spotlight and their guard is down. Secret diners are invaluable. They'll catch any restaurant off guard, and I use them on a weekly basis. Food critic Simon Davies is one of the best in the business and has judged food and service at thousands of restaurants. Sarah Durden Robinson has worked with me and other top chefs for years, creating and perfecting thousands of dishes. It's one thing serving easy to please customers, but how will my competitors perform when my undercover diners are deliberately difficult and demanding? Is there any way you can turn the noise down a bit? I'm allergic to those. I can't eat sultanas. First to face the music is Sicilian restaurant Manula. What I need to tell you now, you've actually been tested twice. I sent in a secret diner. The coach trip identified front of house as Manula's weak point. Will Sarah find that manager Angelo has improved things since my last visit? We had a table for Duncan. I'm really sorry we were running very late. Yes. OK. They haven't been to see us for about 10 minutes. Either they're washed off their feet and they can't cope, or they've actually forgotten we're here. 10 minutes before even a menu, a drink, bread, mm. olive oil. It is too long. You know, 10 minutes, 10 bloody minutes, 10 goddamn minutes to wait. That's, that's that seems not so acceptable. Too long. No, unacceptable. unacceptable. What would you recommend in, the, in your antipasti? Yes, a very nice uh, burrata, cheese, uh, very creamy, okay? Otherwise, a uh, crumb, or the panelle, with the chickpea fritters, with the legs and truffles, with asparagus, some all the scallops. Okay. Everything. So when I asked him about the, um, the starters, he said, could you tell me, what would you recommend? What's your favourite? And then he just pointed at everything and read out what it said on the menu, which is what I've been doing for the last 10 minutes. A lady wants your personal recommendation. She's not asking you to read the menu out again. She's asking for help. The scallops are delicious. Hello. Sure. I've just, I've, this is delicious, but I've just tasted his. It's absolutely fantastic. Can I, can I change yes. and have that instead? Well, please? you want yes, no problem. Do you mind? OK, yeah. I, I, let me check her with the manager. OK, That's thank you. Problem. Prego, oh. what's going on? Prego, what's going on? Prego, what's going on? Look at your face! His is so delicious, I yes. wanted that one instead. <laughs> is that yeah, you want to leave the, the squid as yeah. well? Yeah, I don't want the squid, I wanted to have the, the beef. But I'm sorry, I have to charge for the squid. Yeah, that's absolutely fine, of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's fine. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Sorry. Thank Why you. Did you because that's fish. so delicious. I know, but fish. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Thank you. That was a disaster. Have you any idea how flexible we have to be with customers today? I deliberately put her in there to see what level of flexibility your restaurant has. Okay yes, thank you. It was. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, but I tried his beef. It was so delicious. I thought, oh, I made a mistake. He still got to go from fish to meat. I know, I'm it's sorry. Much more fulfilling. And we'll do it straight away. That's really kind. Of course. Thank, thank you very much. Not an issue, not an issue. Thank you. Gracious. Really, really gracious. And why are you coming out and being ten times more charming than your maitre d'? The food has been perfect, immaculate, fantastic. And that squid I had earlier, absolutely delicious. But this, this service that's letting it down. It's not doing justice to what's coming out of the kitchen. Angelo, talk to me, please. Well, I remember, I say, I remember very well. The day was a crazy lunch. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah, I agree with you that many things went wrong this day. 
Fortunately, it's not always like that. Fortunately. Now that was a bad day. We all have them. Bounce back and put it right. You're more capable of doing it. Listen, but the first thing to do, I mean, where people coming in, look, give if the only... menu, give the drinks. It's not give difficult. It's the small team. But look but out ten for minutes. Look out. Ten minutes seems to be a little bit too long. I mean, a little bit. It's too long. It's I say fucking it's too long. It's too long. It's too, I don't think anyway. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's not a good thing, no. But definitely come back from it. And uh, you know, we're a restaurant. We're a live thing. We, you know, we, we're growing all the time. We've only just got there, and we're, we're doing amazing, amazing work every day, every service. We're doing a great job, and that's why we're still in this, and we can win this. Tonight, two brilliant restaurants are battling it out to become my best Italian and win a place in the semi-final of my nationwide restaurant competition. I'm not losing. Come on, move it. Now it's Bristol restaurant Casimir's turn to discover that I've been spying on them. You've had one huge challenge so far in this competition. Um, unknown to all four of you, there's actually been two tests. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. no one spotted the second one, did they? Well, the first one was the first one was when you came. And the second one is uh, I don't know. After I left the restaurant, I sent my secret diner to your restaurant. Mm-hmm. And this is what you saw. Hi there. Hi, Hi I'm, I'm late, I'm afraid. Yeah, you are late. Oh, Sorry. Okay, but just, uh, Duncan, you want maybe. me a drink? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I owe you a drink, do I? <laughs> Duncan, yeah, A15, yeah. we had it. It's OK, sir. Sorry okay. about that. No, no problem, sir. We've got two valid trout. Thank you. Simon, my undercover Pretty. critic, is having the trout, which some of my 30 diners left uneaten. Slightly undercooked. But it is quite undercooked. And also the peas. A bit like bullets. How is the trout? I thought the trout was slightly undercooked, I thought. And the peas. Peas could have done with another minute on the blanche. It's about taste, isn't it? I think well, it is about taste, but they were undercooked. <laughs> Yeah, there is no debate about that. <laughs> Damn, it's about taste, isn't it? Uh, excuse me, you're now going to undermine a customer? You've got to take criticism seriously. Thank you. So this is your raw deer, served with the traditional <laughs> western and vegetables. That's cold. Excuse me. It's a bit cold, this. Is it cold? Yeah, it's a bit cold. This, this, yeah, there is, it's a bit cold, and it's, I'm, I'm afraid. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because the plates, the plates are a bit cold. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. It was a bit cold. I thought he was a bit like a headmaster then. What's wrong? If, you're, if your children are in the kitchen, if you're working with families, it's often very hard to be objective about their mistakes and their errors. Mum and Dad, as always, overprotective. As parents, you're not dropping them off to school anymore. The customer's king. They're the ones parting with the 55 quid Absolutely. for the 10 courses. Mm. They're the ones that want to boast to their friends on the way back about coming to this amazing, amazing restaurant. You have to act a little bit more humble. So flowers. has the most amazing potential. Yeah. Customer feedback is crucial. And what you've got to do is just listen. 
Well, it's about your customers, not about us, not about our ego, it's not about our food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, it's always been about our customers, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sorry, I, know, I don't but, know yeah. who, I know I'm not protecting you, but... To a certain you, degree. Well, it could be better. So when yeah. the customer yeah, we compl do, complain, we, we, had to, we had to have a plan how we answer to the customer. Gordon say we tre I treat them with cotton wool, uh, but uh, perhaps it's being a father. But uh, uh, yes, yeah, so we, we, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be a little bit tougher and, and put my, my point of view across much in, in a much uh, tougher way. After enduring my coach load of diners and the undercover team I sent in, both Manula and Casimir have survived, blooded but unbowed. Now it's time for the final test. As the chefs leave their restaurants and their front of house teams behind and go it alone in my kitchen. I've asked them to create a dish worthy of a place on the menu at my three Michelin star restaurant. It's been an incredible journey for both these amazing Italian restaurants. Serious contenders in this competition and all very talented chefs. Today, I'm going to eliminate one of them from the competition. Both chefs will cook just one course but it will be the most important dish of their lives. It's their final chance to prove themselves. I've got to prove what we believe in. You know, the last year has been a roller coaster ride for, for me and for Giacomo mm -hmm. as well. Actually opening Menla, then darkness hit us yeah. both. He lost his father, I lost my brother. This is for them and for us. That's right. Yeah? Yeah. And for Menla. <laughs> Yeah, exactly really where we want our food to be in that pinnacle, in that three-star restaurant. A lot of anxiety in us. Pressure to get it right as well, I think. Um, we want to get everything perfect. Everything just needs to be top-notch. Yeah, we realise if our food was to ever reach three-star status, today it needs to have that edge. But it's not just me they have to impress. I've invited 20 highly distinguished guests, including Carlos Presenti, director of the Italian Cultural Institute, and Anna Del Conte, one of the most respected Italian food writers in Britain. These discerning diners will be served both competing dishes, and every plate must be perfect. Right, gentlemen. Today's the day. One of you will be going through to the semi-final, and sadly, one of you will not be cooking again in this competition. You've now got the perfect platform to show off. Every plate is crucial. It starts now. Good luck. For the chefs, there is nowhere to hide. They'll be judged purely on the quality of their food. I've challenged them to create one dish using a classic Italian ingredient, veal. And I can't wait to see what they do with it. OK, first ticket on. Minuna, four veil, please. Yes, chef. Up until now, Santino's been let down by his front of house, but his cooking's been flawless. Tonight, he's designed a dish true to his Sicilian roots. Fillet of veal, served with summer truffles, layered potatoes, girol mushrooms and a cream of celeriac. I'm going to keep it really simple, pan fry the veal, and we're going to serve it with a little potato cake, which has been done with uh, a shoulder of veal, been pot roasted, braised, right. six hours, okay. really slow. What's the sauce? Uh, the sauce is going to be a little reduction of marsala wine because you've got lots of earthiness on the dish, so I wanted to give it an element of sweetness, like, yeah. a, like, a, like a dipping chutney yeah. almost. Okay. All, right, all right, all right, all right. This is classic Santino. He's created a robust dish with few ingredients. A beautiful layered cake with a braised veal. Delicious, like a braised oxtail. It's a real sort of hearty but amazing dish. Mushrooms for four jagamore, potato for four jagamore. Santino's now got to focus his passion and energy into making this a winning dish. This is absolutely everything to me. There's a lot riding on this. Leggermente un po' più liquido, OK? A little bit more liquid, eh? That veal with the truffle is delicious. But they're cooking girol, the most amazing mushrooms, and Jackie has not even seasoned them. There's only four things on the plate, and they have to be done perfectly. And if the mushrooms are under seasoned, it just destroys the whole dish. Just taste those mushrooms, seasoning wise. Thank you, chef. <coughs> Giacomo. <coughs> You've got to taste Giacomo, yeah? Everything. An absolutely amazing girol, yeah? Peeled by hand, yeah? Sauteed brilliantly, and no salt on there. Giacomo. Giacomo. 
Relax. Yeah, okay. Use your head. Yeah. Use everything I told you. Yeah. His sous chef let him down, but Santina's remained calm and impressively focused. Thank you. That looked fantastic. Thank, Thank you, chef. Thank you. Thank you. It cuts like butter. It's fabulous. I can eat the Giacomo. The potato cake is gorgeous. It's got lots of flavour. Mm. Yeah. It's a beautiful dish. It tastes amazing. This is it tastes absolutely food. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Casamia, four cups away, table six. Four caponata, please. Got it? Yeah. I was worried the Casamere boys might risk it all with something dangerously experimental. But I can see a change in them. Their veal caponata served with sweetbreads has all the hallmarks of a classic Italian dish. But knowing these boys, there'll be something more to it. You wouldn't do this without a twist. There's Absolutely. got to be a yeah, twist somewhere. Is. Is it, yeah. yeah, and I'm struggling to find out where it is. Where's the liquid nitrogen? No, no, there's no, no, no liquid nitrogen. nitrogen no, 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 we're very sensible. What have we done? It's a classic dish. Dish is really being refined. So, yep. um, like again, precise temperature ingredients from the water bath with the sweetbreads and the veal. You know, we're very refined, classic really Italian consistent. Dish. So. And you've got that chefy part with the veal, sweetbreads. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How are you yeah. cooking them? We've cooked them in a water bath. Yep, two um, at 62 for two hours. Mm -hmm. It's going to be deep water. Yeah, so yeah. nice crust, and it should be just a melt in your mouth. Yeah, nice crust. Cup of tea, though, so you better make sure when you cook them, they're cooked in the centre as well. Yeah? yeah. Some of my coach diners found Peter and John Ray's fish and quail too experimental. I hope they've pitched the sweetbreads right for my diners tonight. Service, please. It's delicious. But with everything to play for, the boys are starting to panic. In my kitchen, they're out of their comfort zone, and it's showing. Do me a favor. Don't slice that veal until you're 30 seconds away from completing that dish. When you slice the veal, what happens to it? It starts to get cool. That's it, yeah, but what comes out of it? Oh, uh, what, juices. the juices. So we want those juices, juices where? Oh, on that plate was that natural flavour. Right? You've just busted your balls to do four stunning dishes, but slice at the very last minute, yeah? Off you go. Olive oil, Mel, not so. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> you can't slice the veal when you're five minutes away from completing the dish. You want that slice when you're seconds away from that final magic on that plate. So we've got to get rid of the nerves now, relax, compose, and step up to the plate quickly. Guy, I know you're used to your mum wiping your ass, but I'm not going to clear down after chef, you guys, yeah? No fucking way am I clearing down after you in my own chef. kitchen, yes? Yes, chef. Every time we set up a dish, yeah, we clear away, guys, yeah? Yes, chef. That's normal in my kitchen, and I'm sure it's normal in yours, yes? Yes, chef. Normal, chef. I'm not clearing your fucking mess. This uh, casamia dish is sensational. Wow. John Ray, that stove's hot, yes? Yes, chef. A little bit hotter than your water bath? Yes, chef. Be careful you don't scold yourself. Yes, chef. I'll get your mum on my back. <laughs> Casimir, last table. Yeah, I don't want that last table going out exactly like the first table. Service, please. Go. Nice and steady. Well done. Good job. Slow start, strong finish. Well done. Clear down. Well done, man. Well done. Service is over. Every diner has been served both restaurants' dishes, and I'm about to discover what my distinguished guests thought of them, starting with Casimir's. Nice to see you. The sweet bread were absolutely top. Yes. Oh, sweet bread. And so was the little bit, Philip. For me, it was superb. <laughs> I prefer the Casamia dish. The single elements were better, and the mix also was better for me. Nice to see you. How was it? I look at that dish, I can see the boy's soul on it. And that brought tears to my eyes. Now call me bias, but that's how I feel. Well, I definitely prefer the granola dish. The meat was very well cooked, and I like the combination of meat and truffle. Very well done. Rock and welcome back. So which one do you prefer? Santino's one, obviously. <laughs> When you eat it, it was like it melted into your mouth. It was very sweet. My diner's comments have confirmed the level of excellence in this competition. Now it's up to me to choose a winner. Whatever I decide will affect the future of both these restaurants and their chefs. I'm still confident. I'm still very, very confident about it. Simpler flavours, they hit home quicker. Um, that, that's what I do, that's why I stand by them. I'm not going to change what I am. I think we've done enough, um, you know what I mean? We've sent out dishes. Um, in timing, we've communicated, we've plated, everything's cooked perfectly. We're in a totally different environment to whatever we're used to, but loved it, absolutely loved it.
only one of these two brilliant Italian restaurants can go through to the semi-finals. It's a very tough decision, but one I've got to make. My two top Italian restaurants, Manula from London and Casamere from Bristol, have finished their final challenge. And for one of them, the journey is about to come to an end. They've both proved themselves exceptional restaurants, but now it all hangs in the balance. It's time for me to taste the amazing dishes cooked here tonight by Santino and the Casamere brothers, Peter and John Ray, after which I'll make my final decision. Manulas, looks great. And a nice, clever use of seasoned ingredients, the Girols, the summer truffles. That's delicious. It's got such great finesse, but very bold flavors. Really good. I absolutely love the puree. It looks quite rich, but it actually tastes quite healthy, really nice. If I've got one criticism, it's a braised shoulder. It's almost like braised oxtail. It's very rich, and it sort of overpowers the potatoes. Casimir, it looks dainty. Sweetbreads, very dangerous to serve in any restaurant. Mmm. Nice combination of flavor. It's fragrant. That buzz at the end just really helps to lift it. Clever. I've got a problem with the rawness of the courgettes because it sort of spoils the textures. However, the meat's cooked perfectly. Ricotta works bloody brilliantly with the sweetbreads. The big surprise for me today is that both these dishes taste better than I tasted in their restaurants. So, it's the moment of truth. Two outstanding Italian restaurants, but only one can win a place in the semi-final. OK, first off, well done. The magic and the personalities coming through on those plates today was fabulous. Casimir, whatever happens after this competition, continue cooking food like that. The ricotta and the sweetbread and the fillet, packed full of flavour, elegant, and that worked. Criticising the dish, a lot going on there. A hell of a lot going on. The textures were amazing. But your courgettes were too crunchy. Manula, there's a, a huge heart in what you do, and you are one focused guy. Love what you did with the slayer puree. Generous with the truffles, that's you. How could I criticize the dish? I thought the shoulder was quite heavy but packed full of flavour. But this competition is not going to be won or lost on one dish alone. It will be down to this. Which restaurant would I love to return to and eat one more meal? Casimir, Manula, you guys and your restaurants have been under immense pressure. Think back to that coachload of diners walking in there. 30 of them sitting down. It's a nightmare for any restaurant. You've been under scrutiny with secret diners, filming undercover. I think both restaurants took the criticism admirably. And I think you really handled not just the positives, but the negatives as well. And that's what I love to see, how you bounce back. Sadly, there's going to be one restaurant going through to the semi-final based on everything I've seen, tasted, and been part of. The restaurant that's going through to the semi-final Casimir. Great job. Absolutely brilliant. Manula, you are a man that is on a mission. When your team is as good as you, you're going to pop big time. It's been a great experience. We said before we came in that no matter what happened, we'd be, we'd be happy. I'd like to win. But uh, that's, you know, that's, that's the game. Congratulations. Really job well done. I didn't expect it. I didn't, you know, we didn't know. It was such a tough call because we work our nuts off a lot of the time. and. Uh, 
Yeah, to have obviously approval from Gordon uh, to the next round is just unbelievable. And uh, my mum and dad have sacrificed. <laughs> Spit out. They, uh, they've sacrificed everything. And, uh... <laughs> it's me as well. No, I'll be all right. No, um, you know, mum and dad have sacrificed everything over the last 10 years. and. Uh, as long as everybody sticks together, I think we'll uh, keep going far, you know? Well done, John. I think we're just going to go to that next semi-finals and know that we can actually move forward and get through to the final and hopefully go on to win the thing. Well done, all. Girls are my boy. Well done. Girls are my boy. Well done. I've lost Manula, and that's a big voice and a heavyweight in this contest. But I have found Casimir, two young guys that mean business. And now, it's game on.